Now that we have the new iPad Air, yeah, it's pretty impressive as far as performance and features, but there's one problem. You also have the older iPad Air 5, which is still pretty impressive as far as performance and features go. And it's at its lowest price ever, so should you save your money? Well, let's talk about it. To me, the biggest advantage to go with the older iPad Air is gonna be the price. It's been as low as $399 here recently, and that's not much more than the cheaper iPad 10 while the new iPad Air is $599. But one advantage with the newer version is you now get twice the storage on the base model of 128 versus only 64. Plus you can now go up to 512 or one terabyte of storage where you can only go up to 256 on the older model. So storage is definitely something to consider depending on how you're gonna use your iPad. It may seem like they're different, but the display sizes are identical between these two. They're both 10.86 inches, but they just round up to 10.9 on the older iPad Air and 11 on the new iPad Air 6. In fact, you can use most of the same accessories or cases for both iPads with no problems. They both have an LED backlit IPS display with 2360 by 1640 resolution. Both have an anti-reflective coating and are 500 nits brightness. One one big advantage is if you go with the new iPad Air, there's a 13 inch version, which is the first time they've had this larger version of the iPad Air, of course at a higher cost. But for me, they look so close as far as the screen quality, brightness, and viewing angles that it wouldn't surprise me if they're using the same exact display. So you can't really go wrong with either one as far as screen quality. Now you might think that the battery life is going to be better on the newer version, but in my typical battery drain test, they both lasted about the same at just over 5 hours. In fact, that's the same as the older iPad Air 4, which came out 4 years ago. You can't go wrong with either as far as battery life goes, since they're pretty much the same, and should last a day or two of mixed usage, even longer if you turn the screen brightness down. Software wise, you'll get pretty much an identical experience since they're both on iPadOS 17.5.1 as of this video. You also have Touch ID right on the power button for both, which is always nice to have, even though it's not quite as easy as Face ID. One difference is gonna be with the Apple Pencil. You can only use the second gen Apple Pencil on the older iPad Air, and you can only use the new Apple Pencil Pro on the newer model, which does have some nice features though, where you can squeeze the sides to bring up tools and double tap to switch between tools. You can use the USB-C Apple Pencil on both iPads, but I feel like the other two versions are gonna be better options, especially when it comes to charging. Nice thing is you get video out on both iPads, which is nice if you wanna to connect to a TV or external monitor, especially while traveling if you don't wanna mess with Wi-Fi. You can also use Stage Manager for both iPads if you wanna be a little more productive. Obviously, you'll get longer software support on the newer iPad Air 6, but there's still plenty of life left on the older iPad Air 5 since it's only about two years old right now. As far as performance goes, they both have eight gigabytes of RAM, but you now get the M2 chip in the newer iPad Air versus the M1 chip in the iPad Air 5. Performance is gonna be one area that's a nice improvement over the older iPad, which you can see here in the Geekbench testing. I just don't know if I feel the difference enough in everyday use, probably if you're doing some video editing with some super high res video or something that's more graphic intense, you might notice the difference, but for 90% of people that are using these, I'm not sure if the extra horsepower is necessary. Even for gaming, the older iPad Air 5 is gonna be one of the better options out there, and it's gonna be able to play pretty much any game without too much effort. Now, when it comes to speakers, you've got one on each side, even if it looks like two on both. Weird thing is, I almost feel like the older iPad Air 5 sounds a little bit louder and better overall, but it could be my ears playing tricks on me. Here's a quick sample of each, just to give you an idea of what they sound like.
As far as cameras go, they both have a 12 megapixel ultra wide that's on the front. One difference is they move the front facing camera over to the long edge on the new iPad Air. So it might be a little bit better for Zoom meetings, FaceTime, or other video conference calls, but you've got a 12 megapixel wide angle lens on the back of both. And you can shoot up to 4K 60 frames per second on the back of both iPads. To me, I don't know if there's a big enough difference in photo and video quality to choose one over the other. But here's a quick sample just to give you an idea of what to expect. So as you can see, even though the new iPad Air might be a nice upgrade from the previous version, I don't know if it's a big enough upgrade if you already have the iPad Air 5 or even maybe the iPad Air 4 for some people, unless you want longer software support. Obviously, a lot of this is going to be personal preference, but the older iPad Air 5 definitely still holds its own in 2024, in my opinion, and might work for some people who want to save some money. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.